Okay, today we're going to have a look at bias traps. Basically, in a cassette deck, you need a bias signal to erase the tape and also to prepare the, the tape for accepting, you know, your recorded signal. If you don't have bias, you're not going to get very far trying to record. Equally, if you don't have a bias trap, what's going to happen is that signal that is mixed in with the audio signal, that's going to go through to your... Uh, recording amplifier and it'll basically overwhelm it and you'll get nothing out of it so it'll it'll basically just record silence <clears throat> other issues you might have is that you record and then you hear static and and things like that and that could be the capacitor in that part of the circuit that in the bias trap is actually breaking down so as you can see that the setup here is fairly simple we have a function generator. I'm putting out an 86 kilohertz signal because that approximates what I had in the Pioneer. Most of the Pioneer decks seem to be around that. Then we have basically it's an inductor and then it's a capacitor in parallel. So there's no capacitor in there. So we'll just put one in and then see what happens. So channel one is the signal that's being fed out of the function generator and then this will be the attenuated signal on channel 2 so that'll be the blue channel on the screen there so if I put a 151 in which is a little under what this should be you can see it doesn't really do a lot you get a phase shift but you don't really get much in the way of attenuation so a near value that's that's almost right is 221. So if we put in a 221 capacitor, let's have a look at what that does for us. So that's much better. That's probably almost usable as it is because it knocks that signal right down. Now what I found doing my calculations is that I needed something around, I think it's like 194, 195, which you can't really find capacity that exact value. So if you remember from that uh, CT7100 video what I did was I put a 331 and a 471 in series which gets pretty close to to the values that we need so let's do that here and see what happens get that in there you go so that's significantly better even than the 221 and that's because you know the values are are basically close to what they should be so the thing that I've noticed is it doesn't ever seem to go to zero but we get close and I think that's what we're looking for so one extra thing that we'll have a look at now is what happens if we actually change the frequency so we're at 86 now what happens if we change that so that's 87 not much difference really when we go to 88, the signal goes up, 89, 90. So you can see it starts doing less and less. Let's go back to 86 and we go down. And as soon as we go down, it's, it's rising there. So the window, I think, for these is, is pretty narrow. Uh, it might be like, you know, one, 1K up or down. So I think that's kind of useful that, you know, you don't have to be, you know, exact to the decimal microfarad, which you can't be anyway, but uh, you do need to be relatively close. Um, and obviously if we use like a 151 and, and hope that's going to be good enough, well, it's not. It's not going to be anywhere near good enough. So hopefully that uh, helps with the understanding of, of bias trap and maybe a little bit about what bias signal is actually in there for. Um, there doesn't seem to be a lot of information as I've you know, researched the problem. You can get bits and pieces, but there doesn't seem to be too many people uh, sharing what's going on. So, you know, I might be an expert in, in bias traps, but uh, this is, you know, what I've learned. And so we'll, we'll share it here. <laughs>